Howdy, Tubal Kane again, the old buggy whip maker, showing you some old technology as usual. Today I'm going to show you how to align the tailstock uh, with the uh, center on the headstock. And uh, this uh, becomes out of alignment from time to time, and I'm going to tell you why and, and <coughs> how to indicate it in two different methods. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about this tailstock. And this tailstock came off my closing. 12 inch lathe and tail stocks are really made uh, in two pieces. There's a top and a bottom and you can see I've got them separated here a little bit to, to show you uh, that they are two pieces and on the, the end here I had to really take it off the lathe to show you this so I'd have decent light and I hope this even shows it up. But there's always two index marks or witness marks and you need to make sure that those are lined up and that can be done with uh, the two set screws. Uh, there's one on each side. Sometimes they're socket head screws, sometimes they're screwdriver screws, sometimes they're square and square uh, bolts sticking out of there, which are always in the way, by the way. But <clears throat> why would this be off? Well, it could be off for several reasons. First of all, uh, one of the methods of cutting a taper on a lathe is the offset tailstock method, where we move these apart a certain amount and if you're turning between centers you're going to get a taper. But uh, you don't want uh, this to be off center for any other reason uh, because uh, you're going to then cut a taper if you're uh, cut, turning between centers. You will cut a taper automatically and you don't want that. Also when you're drilling and reaming you will be plowing. That is you're not com coming in on true center resulting in broken drills or oversized holes and other inaccuracies, so don't to avoid that. Now, how do these get off? Well, I, I just told you somebody might have set it for a taper, and they didn't return it, or in the case of a school, which I spent 40 years in, uh, there's no telling why it might be off, but you better check it, because kids uh, uh, did not return them, or they're only returning them by sight, and that isn't close enough. And if you're in a, a shop situation where you're working with other men, you're not sure uh, who used the lathe last and what operation they were performing. So even right now, you can see that's a little bit off center. Uh, if you're a one-man shop and you never change anything, this doesn't really need to be done or done very often. Or, uh, But we're going to put this back on the closing lathe, and I'm going to show you two methods, one on the atlas lathe and one on the closing lathe. And... Uh, this may be a two-part uh, demonstration on YouTube. I'm not sure. Be sure and watch my many, many other videos on lathes, milling machines, and machining, and little engines. All right, now we're standing at the Atlas Craftsman 10-inch, and right here are the index marks. I know they don't show up, but... Uh, even if they read apparently at zero or line up, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily uh, exactly lined, but uh, this particular tailstock lines up with the screwdriver slot on each side. And when you make a setting, make sure you have two screwdrivers or two wrenches or two Allen wrenches. So you're working uh, from back and forth from both sides, and you can do it almost in a matter of seconds. But here's the method that I was taught when I was in high school, and it is a method using a test bar. Uh, I don't have a test bar. A test bar is a perfectly ground shaft with center holes, and it would be uh, probably an inch in diameter and maybe 12 inches long, and you hold it between centers, and we run an indicator back and forth across it. Now, if it does not... Uh, if it is not commercially made, it isn't going to be any good. So don't think you can make one just by taking a piece of cold rolled stock and drilling center holes in it. If it isn't perfect, perfectly accurate, all is for naught. So what I'm using here really is what's called a lathe mandrel or a lathe arbor with center holes. It is hardened and ground, and this is a half inch diameter. The only thing is here, I'm really working against myself because an arbor does have about a half thousandth or one thousandth taper on it, so you could press this on work and turn your work between centers. But I'm getting a point across here uh, by using this. And by the way, you can buy these uh, real 
ground arbors on eBay, but they are a hundred dollars, and it's something you only use once every few years. So uh, borrow one or wait and use the next method I'm going to show you here presently. Now I've got a dial indicator with a magnetic base set up, and it's uh, set up such that the uh, uh, end of the indicator is on center, and we're perpendicular to the work. It's mounted on the carriage, and I have enough clearance so I can move back and forth. Now let's take a look at this uh, indicator needle, and I'm starting to move the carriage now toward the tailstock, and you're going to see that this one was pretty uh, uh, accurate to start with. It's, uh, this is not a lathe that I ever changed that adjustment on. So we've got about one thousandth of an inch of, uh, of taper there, but that may be uh, because of the taper on the arbor, uh, or if I got the arbor in there the other way, way we may have actually uh, two thousandths of an inch offset on the between the two centers. But for all intents and purposes, this would be pretty good for most uh, most work. And I will check this in a little while off camera with the other method, which I'm going to show you over on the closing lathe. But you can run this back and forth. And the real acid test of whether or not you have it perfect comes when you turn a piece of work between center and if it's a, a thick piece and it's not flexing uh, and you get it perfectly uh, uh, cylindrical and no taper on it when you measure it uh, then you know that you are truly working on a lathe with aligned centers.